So, hey, everybody, my name is Marie, and I'm the CIO and co-founder of Data360. And I'm going to talk about low-code and no-code in terms of the ins and outs of customer acquisition and how you can make customer acquisition a lot easier. So about me, um, again, I'm the CIO co-founder of Data360. I'm a software architect. I started back in the olden days, 30 years ago, uh, with AOL, um, a startup that actually rolled up into AOL and uh, worked in newspapers in 1990 when there was such a thing called a newspaper. And uh, I've uh, been a Technical Academy Award winner, I've contributed over 100 million in revenue to companies and projects. And right now we're working on onboarding um, about 200,000 or so people through Google Cloud and 500,000 so people through Microsoft, Azure, in the Data360 apps and platforms. So we're very excited about our growth and what we're working on right now. My passions, I'm a foodie, I'm a spiritual warrior. Um, really here for my people, so here for people like you every day, all day, um, looking to make a difference. And uh, I'm a Black, Latina, Asian, queer, technologist, entrepreneur, all of that. So lots of history, lots of things. So feel free to hit me up with questions on LinkedIn or um, Casey has all my information if you want to get in touch. So... When you talk, when you look at an uh, area like low code, no code, and you look at an area like software development or any kind of technology, you want to have an application in mind. And so in this case, we're going to talk about the tactics for customer acquisition. So when you talk about technology, right? So low code, no code applies to the same areas that you do if you deal with if you deal with SaaS software as a service, if you're dealing with manual coding, um, it's no different. So um, there is low code, no code for websites and search. There's low code, no code for social media. There's low code, no code for email. There's no code, low code for events and online groups, right? So all of these things are areas that you wanna consider and think about. So, so the, the first decision you need to make when you talk about low code, no code, or any area of programming is what are you focusing on? So if uh, in this scenario, we're talking about customer acquisition, what, which area are you gonna focus on? What is your superpower? So are you gonna go websites, social media, email, events, right? So websites are important only if, you're, if your clients already know the products or services exist like yours. People build lots of websites all the time and then nobody knows they exist because they don't know that your product or service exists. So you can't use the web really for brand new niches or things that are very obscure or things that are unique because people don't know to search for you. So um, websites become very costly and very ineffective unless you're selling something very normal like pet food, beauty, flowers, TVs, things that people already know and they're already looking for. Now, social media is actually the opposite. Social media is where people go to discover new things that they haven't heard before, things that are obscure, things that are recommended, things that are word of mouth. So the great, and, and social media is great for visual products, services, um, enticing customers to buy things, getting them to do impulse buys, getting them to connect with you on a whim things like that, hitting the unexpected. So social media is really where people go to get the unexpected. So sort of keep that in mind, right? Email. Now, email is really great for early adopters, people who need to get to know you in your products and services, and they want to receive education. So email is really great if you have a type of product or service that really need, people need to understand more in order to consume it, in order to, uh, to really get into the secret sauce of what you're offering. So email is really great for that. And then events and online groups are really great for early adopters who need to get to know your product and service and receive education also. So um, events, online events are really great for people to get to know you. So we do a lot of those with Day360 because we have a technical service. So you need to be educated, understand things. So that's why we do events. So keep this in mind that like 
the the purpose of your software selection is critical. So make sure you're clear on that. The second part is understanding your customer journey. So knowing what you need to do also helps you select the software that you need to get. So reviewing goals, gathering research, touch points in, in brainstorms, right? Empathy maps, brainstorms with lenses, affinity maps, sketch the journey, refining goals, digitize and share use launch, right? So I'm gonna pause on the screen for a little bit so you can sort of take notes on this screen because all of these things are techniques, all of these steps are techniques that you need to know in order to really get into the weeds, into the details of customer acquisition so you can understand what you need, right? And the first thing I always see with my entrepreneurs that we mentor and our clients is not knowing how to set goals. So you can't pick the right software until you have goals. We have people come to us all the time and say, well, what do I need for email? What do I need for social media? What do I need for this? Well, it depends on your goals, right? So if you pick random software and then you try to like make a goal or just do random stuff, you're not going to get very far. So you have to make sure you understand what your goals are and goals meaning who are you trying to reach? What social media channels, right? What e types of emails are you looking to send? Do your emails need to contain video? Do they need to have images? Are they just mostly text? Um, do they need to reach millions of people, thousands of people, or hundreds of people, right? So depend, that all depends on what software you're going to use, right? So you can you have to think about how you how you construct that goal. So uh, first is who, right? Who are you trying to reach, right? And how many of those people are you trying to reach, right? And what are you trying to reach them with? right and why is it gonna need to happen right so like does it does it need to happen on linkedin because it's mostly professionals that's the why does it need to happen on facebook because it's entrepreneurs is it does it need to happen on twitter because it's news why right the big why um and then let's see we got who what where right where we are why how so where is not just the, the channel, right? So we talk, I use the channel as the why, right? So the where is where do you want them to go? What is the call to action, right? So how do you get them to get your audience to understand where they need to go, right? And it might be software that gets them there, right? So it could be a webinar software that automates them to your page. It could be a link tracker that lets you know when they're clicking on your link so you can email them. It might be some other type of technology, right? So there's lots and lots of really amazing technologies. And so you wanna make sure that you really get that who, what, where, why, and how down before you start doing the research and the brainstorms and all the other things, right? So the second thing I wanna say about the screen is Empathy map, brainstorming lenses, all these things, Google them, right? Uh, these are practices. These are best practices for customer acquisition. So, and they all have, they're all things you want to learn. So the biggest thing when you're planning to use low code, no code is you have to put in the time. You have to put in the time to learn what the terms mean in the application you're trying to build. And then you need to also plan how things need to work. You can't just start shooting from the hip and thinking that things are gonna work or talking off the top of the head, as we say. So making sure that when you uh, start, you take this journey map and you Google it and you learn what is a touch point and channel brainstorming. Literally type in touch point channel and, brainstorm, and channel brainstorm. Type in empathy map. Look, go to Google Images, look up the images, go to type in brainstorm with lenses, look up the images, Google the articles, right? Understand what each of these things mean and how they apply 
to your overall plan, right? And get this journey done right the first time. The most expensive thing that can happen in a business is after having to do things after you've gotten big, right? And you've done it the wrong way. So you've done it the wrong way. Now you have millions of customers. Guess what happens? You spend tens of millions of dollars correcting your mistakes, right? So just do it right the first time. Get it right the first time. Get the practices together. Then start talking about the software, right? And make sure you understand exactly what you want to do and why you want to do it. The, other, the last thing I want to talk about before I get into a little bit of the software is creating a daily or weekly team standup, making sure you understand how the software is going to be used in your overall rollout, right? So these are the steps to the rollout, the to do, the plan, the develop, the testing, deploying, and then being done, right? And you see there's boxes in here where there's a task. There's a feature. Now the feature is the software. What is the software gonna do? What is the feature gonna do to help move this forward, right? So on the to-do side, right? What is your What are you gonna have your customer do, right? Or if it's internal, if it's for your internal team, what do you need your team to do, right? But in this case, we're talking about customer acquisition. So we're gonna talk about what it is, what is the feature that you want to have happen? Then what is the story behind that feature, right? Or maybe there's a couple stories, right? Behind that feature, why is this need to happen, right? So what are these jobs that you're trying to get the customer to do? So you might need them to, uh, for example, you might need a customer to, to uh, watch a video, right? So the user story is they're watching a the video because they're learning how to use your product. And then the second thing that that video is going to do at the end is going to display a link so that they sign up for a webinar, right? So then you know, watch a video, do a webinar. Now, how many different ways can I get this done? What kind of videos can I make? How many tools can I use for that, right? What kind of links can I get to this webinar? How many different ways can the webinar happen, right? So... There's a lot of different understandings of how these things can work. So I'll show you some examples. Um, and then planning, developing, testing, deploying, and being done are all steps that you need to do, right? So planning, we've talked about developing means making the software, right? So do you have special conditions in which you need things to be made, right? Do you have a team? Do you have a developer team? Do you have an outsource team? Do you have a non-technical team, right? And in the case of low-code, no-code, you don't need a developer overseas. You don't need a technical team. You can have regular, technically proficient people use the software. When it's low-code, no-code, you don't have to have tons of people working on your app, right? Or working on your idea. That's the whole point. So you can easily serve millions of users using this software. So when we talk about development, we're not talking about the usual painful, error-prone stuff, right? We're talking about clean, easy to use development tools, software that can help you do that. And we'll show you how easy it is in a minute. Um, same with testing, being able to test things out. You need software, you need widgets, you need low code, no code. Um, and deployment. Deployment means releasing it to users. Same thing. So when you start doing your product or service, you want to know and it, the first, oh, sorry, say the first thing in low code, no code is, is it crucial for their life? Can the customer live without your product or service? Is it a daily, weekly, or monthly need? Will they buy it even if they don't like you or don't like your company? Second half, is it something, is it something, is it want to have where is it a product that's fun or is it something that the customer can only buy if it's in special or it's in limited places like a theme park, a museum, a boutique place, right? Do you have to do a lot of personalized selling? Are there a lot of alternatives to what you sell, right? And so need to have and want to have are very different customer acquisitions. 
And I say that because it starts with how you communicate. So now we're gonna start with some tools that will help you tell the story, right? Of what you're building. So just to refresh your memory, uh, we're gonna talk about goals, right? But before you even, I should say the beginning step of goals is what the heck are you trying to get people to do and what are you selling and that sort of thing, right? And so you have your need to have, you've categorized your product as a need to have or a want to have. Is it crucial? Is it not crucial, right? And then we're going to start communicating that. So this is an example of a low-code, no-code tool called CopySmith. And so CopySmith is a really amazing tool because it helps you write copy, right? And it gives you ideas on how to put together your story, right, of what you're doing. So let's say, for example, we're uh, building out a, let's see, we're building out a new line of makeup, right? We're a beauty company. And we want to put together a blog. So we have this blog intro um, and we're going to make a new file and we're going to call it uh, introducing Whip It Gloss. I'm just going to call it Whip It Gloss. So with this kind of software, you can basically give it um, a title, give the blog a title, and the software will actually generate introductions to a blog for you so you can start to write the blog, right? So we say, for example, oh, Whip It Gloss gives your lips the most moisture, uh, so better moisture, than any other brand. And then we click generate. And then you have all the examples of how to talk, begin to talk about whipping gloss, right? So, one, obviously, just a basic one, right? So it gives, a, it's a product that gives you perfect moisture balance for your lips. Try it today and feel the difference. So it has a readability score. It has a character count. You can tell the AI you like it or you don't like it. You can publish it to Zapier. If you guys are familiar with Zapier, if not, we'll put some information in the um, video description for that. Um, so Whip It Gloss is a lip gloss that gives you better, gives your lips better moisture than any other brand. Our product contains vitamins that make your lips healthier. We wanted to create the best lip gloss and we think our product is the best. So this gives you just a basic idea of a, a more expanded description. And maybe it is because it has vitamins. Maybe it's because it contains something else. The point is you can just insert the other things because now you have the language and the words to begin to write the copy. Um, and so then you can go with a gloss as a brand that wants to change your lips forever. Now this is a whole nother level, right? We're a brand that produces the best quality lip products on the market with our unique ingredients. You will find our products make your lips that stand out from everyone else's. Our products we use for any occasion and will last for hours. Now that's amazing, right? That's a professional copywriter writing about your brand. So look at how incredible that is that you can actually just take that and really make it happen automatically, right? And then here's another one, right? Whip It Gloss is a lip gloss that actually does what it promises. You see it all the time. A company will advertise this product as amazing, but then you try it out, it's not what you expected. Whip It Gloss makes your lips feel so smooth and moisturized. It's unlike any other brand out there. Now that's, that's an incredible one also, right? And you might wanna use those products together, right? I mean, those paragraphs products, those paragraphs together, right? Which is 
you might want to have it so that the brand change your list forever. And then you put these, you, then you have that as a second paragraph. And then, you know, you can start to play with these concepts. And then like, say you don't like any of these or you want more, you can generate more. So it's a pretty amazing AI-based low code, no code tool, right? And then we can also go back and say, for example, we want to make a whole article about it. Then we can also make an article summary that will summarize the, the clips. We can make a listicle, which tells all the top 10 ways to use the lip gloss. Um, we can make a content expander, a short piece, and then expands it to a bigger piece. We can make um, a Kickstarter campaign idea. Um, we can make a blog titles. We can do a content rewriter. So say you wrote some content and you need it rewritten. So you can do that. And the coolest one I like actually is you can actually do a landing page, which is pretty cool, right? So we have to do those all the time in business, especially if you're in digital marketing and who isn't in digital marketing, right? So we'll just call it Whip It Gloss Landing Page. And then we just wanna put here Whip It Gloss. Oh, actually, we have this one, let's see. We want to open in a new tab because we want to take that old, old other recent <laughs> description that we made and we want to add that to the company description. All right, so we can expand it. So let's go with, I like the one that has where it does what it promises. That's a pretty cool one. So we, um, my name is Marie, and we sell whip it gloss, right? And then we have some keywords, so we hit gloss, uh, lip gloss, makeup, um, beauty, organic, natural, um, moisture. I can spell moisture. And we hit generate. And then here we have the beginning of a landing page. And so we can start to see how the features of our product can be put into an actual page. So a headline protects lips with organic ingredients, a subheadline, a lip gloss that actually makes your lips feel silky smooth, a feature, give your lips a tingling, minty feeling, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can open a new page and then you can get a sense of what it looks like on an actual landing page, right? It's not gonna be styled there, but it just gives you an idea of how it can be put together, right? So you can take a look at it. You can see kind of the beginnings of what the page could look like. You can see how to begin to market it. And then you can also keep generating more ideas and seeing how they work. So let's, we can even do another one. So here's another one, whip it gloss, it's organic, it's moisture, it's natural. So different than other glosses out there. So again, you can start to work that as an overall landing page. So that's an example of beginning to 
sort of put out there like the content that you need to put out there what is it that you're gonna do how are you gonna do it right so then you go okay I'm gonna put out a web page I'm gonna use this on my Facebook page I'm gonna use this as an email template I'm gonna use this as a part of a description of why are they coming to this event right so that's how you begin to take these tools and sort of apply them to how you're going to reach people, right? So how are you going to do this, right? So that's why it's important to know, I, I can have this landing page, but if the landing page doesn't have a purpose and it doesn't have something to fit into, I'm just sort of, you know, throwing things into the wind. So why do I want to do that? That's not going to be very effective. So that's why you have to have a plan ahead of time, because then when you generate this landing page, when you generate these descriptions, then it's going to be able to be applied to an overall plan, right? So <clears throat> that's CopySmith. So that's how you use the copywriter. So the next thing I'm going to show you is another one where you can use it to make videos. So this one is called Lumen5. And so, for example, um, this is one I just discovered, so I've been very, very excited about it. And <clears throat> what's great about it is it actually can help you make the like super cool videos, right? So let me just type in moist lipstick as a overall term. So I can take this article, for example, from the Today Show from 2021 and it has all the text in it. It has all the stuff about the different lipsticks and what's available, right? So we'll just pretend that this is our line here. And then we will make a new video. And so what's great about this is it will literally take this video and turn it into a fantastic, or take this article and turn it into a fantastic video. So let me just look at some templates here. I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick professional chart. Let's just do that one. So we can pick use template. And it gives you a little video stat here. And this is actually not the only tool that does this. There's numerous ones, just like CopySmith. CopySmith, if you type in AI copywriter, you can find many copywriters that might meet your needs. Same with this, video creators. There's tons of them. I know it's, this is brand new for a lot of people out there, but there's tons and tons of information out there. So we're gonna type in the URL for this and we're gonna import this article into the video tool. So here it is. I'm gonna unselect use AI to for the best sentences just as I like it done the other way. Um, you can experiment in a lot of different ways with this tool. There's tons of media, there's icons, there's music, there's style. But what's great about this is you just hit this little button and in a few minutes, we'll have a full video. So what's great about this is you can see it turned that professional business presentation into a woman putting on lip gloss. And then you can see here, it, it's just going through and taking different screens and make it so like you say, okay, that screen doesn't quite make sense. Let's delete that. So here's the rest of the article. You can purchase thing, blah, blah, blah. Price and availabilities. Of da, 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 da. Okay. I don't want to, I don't want all the promo about the Today Show in this. So I can go, okay, let me take all this out. And now you can see that it automatically put together pictures of women 
putting on makeup and moisturizing and hydrating. Um, it talks, it shows lips, shows hydrate lipstick, it shows a gloss. So notice that, you know, I didn't do anything except put the article in and hit make video and it selected all the images and it, it took all the text and applied it to the right images. And say, if I want different images, I can just go over here to media and I can pick different ones. And you can see here, it's already pre-selected uh, different ones for here, right? So if I say black women lipstick, it will actually give me pictures or some of black women and I can pick out different ones that I want here. So not all of them are lips. So let's say I want, I put in black women beauty. And I could try different ones, right? So say if I want to change things, I can change it up. So the point here is that you have pretty much an instant tool to go and find how things might go together. You can also upload things. So we have our logos here and all that. So pretty amazing that you can just instantly put together a presentation. And then when you're done with the presentation, you can hit what's called an outro and then boom, your social media. So that's tool number two. I just wanna hip you to when you're talking about putting together the the overall um i want to stop here because uh, i see the presentation did something weird Okay, and I have a full screen, let's hit play. Yeah, there it goes, okay. Let me go back. Okay. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So um, again, when we talk about going back to the journey, right, and you know, your goals and everything, when you make these articles and you make the video, you want to know the purpose. So make sure when you put together everything in the in this uh, Lumen 5 video or in CopySmith, you have the most amazing reasons why you're doing what you're doing. So then everything comes together in a very clear way. The third tool I'm actually going to talk about, and before we wrap it up here, is called Answer the Public, which I love to demo for people. Um, to show kind of low code, no code. So this is the, kind of the rawest version of a search engine. So say you want to know all the different ways you could talk about um, lipstick, right? So, or lip gloss, let's say lip gloss. Um, this will tell you everything that's in the US, and ignore that creepy robot, um, everything that's in the U.S. around lip gloss in Google and Bing. And so we're going to hit a search. We're going to hit search. And what it's going to do is actually tell you why people are thinking of, or how people are thinking about lip gloss in your market. So that when you 
go through this, your goals, right? And you, this is, begins the kind of the second step of gathering research. You want to look at how people are wanting to talk about your product so that you can answer their questions and answer their needs, right? So can lip gloss have, have, help chap lips? That's a search. Um, can lip gloss be used as blush? Can lip gloss mold? Uh, lip gloss go on a plane? Can lip gloss go bad? Right, so all of these are what are called can questions. And then there are lots of other ones, right? So there are where, when, which, what, how, why, are, right? All kinds of questions about lip gloss. We have also what are called prepositions. So you can basically see all the different kinds of lip gloss you could sell, uh, lip gloss for tunes, lip gloss for brown skin, all these different things. And so you can begin to take um, your initial videos and copy and expand them into answering other questions, having other features that apply to your lip gloss. So again, you have to know your initial understanding of what you want to talk about. And then you can use this tool to begin to expand what you want to talk about, right? And come up with different strategies. And so you can actually take this and start to create other copy. You can play with CopySmith and see what, what it comes up with and give you ideas about what to talk about, different ways to sell your products and services. Um, so there are you know, many different ways to make blog posts, many different ways to make social media posts, many different ways to make landing pages, websites, events, right? But you, this will all give you expansion ideas, right? So there's your initial idea using the low code, no code tools, and then there's expansion, right? And you can take this information and circle back to the other tools and begin to make copy, begin to make videos, begin to make images, those sorts of things. So that's a, just a little sample. Um, you can also look at comparisons. And then there's lots of other ways of looking at search results for uh, lip gloss. So, so many different ways you can sell things. There's so many different ways you can expand. It's, it's actually really amazing. This is what you call big data. So this is part of what Data360 works on. And so, um, However you want to explore, you can actually start to really go to town on this research. And what's cool, actually, uh, the last thing I'll share about Answer the Public is when you click on any of these, it actually goes to the actual Google search to show you what happens on that particular search result. So lip gloss to make lips bigger. This tells you a lot of things. It tells you who your competition is. It tells you who's at the top of the game, what do the ads look like, how do people position their products in Google Shopping. It tells you what kind of blogs are being written, who to connect with to write blogs about your product. I mean, so many things, right? And that's the power of big data. And this uh, big data, low code, no code tool gives you instant access to all of that information. So it's really, really profound. Um, and it's uh, incredible what you can do. So to wrap up this session, we're gonna go into a few other principles you wanna think about when you're doing customer acquisition and you're doing this content generation using low code, no code. One is be authentic, make sure that you are not using these tools to just be fake and say anything to anybody. Make sure it actually reflects your actual voice. Um, make sure you find your superpower, right? So in looking at the data and looking at all these different uh, ways of expressing yourself and, and making videos, make sure you have a really competitive strategy. Make sure you have a really great growth strategy. There's a differentiation. There's price space. There's supporting information. Make sure you're being innovative, um, thinking about how you do this right. So this goes back into that planning aspect and doing that customer journey. Um, make sure you have social proof, right? And if you don't have social proof, build social proof, revenue, users, customer served, corporate partners, all that fun stuff, right? Use the low-code, no-code tools to tell people about those, right? Make videos, make more articles, make content that sort of thing, right? Um, 
make sure you understand all the acquisition channels. So what's going on with Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Slack, Telecom, WhatsApp, Broke, Clubhouse, Google Play Store, Apple App Store, right? And I'll, I'll make sure that we have this presentation so you can view it and understand all these different channels. Um, and then we talk about big data with low code and no code, right? So what it does is it helps you optimize for Google, optimize for social media, optimize for listings, optimize for mobile. And then the biggest thing you can do then is then put this together into one plan, right? So this is what the plan looks like. Making sure you understand the acquisition tactic, right? Is the product a need to have or want to have? You wanna be authentic. You wanna talk about your superpower. You wanna provide social proof. You wanna pick a channel. Then you wanna take all of that. You wanna use it in the low code, no code tools to rapid prototype, right? Get it out there get the feedback and understand what works in your business, right? And that's the cycle, right? That's how all the top companies do it. They put it out there, they experiment, they do the, use these tools to make things. Even the biggest companies in the world, if you look at any of the web pages of these different um, low-code, no-code tools, big companies use these tools every day. Um, and they use them to put their products and services out there in a way so that they really get good feedback from the market, and then they start over again. So do the same. Be excellent and do use the best practices for your company. And this is us, Data360. Um, so feel free to reach out to us. If you did, all this sounds like even still too complicated, we're happy to give you very simple, easy ways, low cost ways to access these kind of tools to access this kind of information um, and have it done for you so you can really understand how it works um, in the beginning and then you can start to do it on your own. So we like to teach, teach you how to fish. So thank you so much and really appreciate all of your time and feel free to reach out.